Yes, Jesus loves me. Amen. 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 So this Sunday is the last in a series of the sermonic theme of A Better Way. Love stories and languages of love. A Better Way. This is the third in this series, and it is titled Holding On to Love. Holding On to Love. Beatrice lost her autistic son quite unexpectedly. While she had loved all of her kids, she thought that Kenny was special. She saw him as a real gift from above. She made sure he was included and that her family understood that Kenny was not to be overlooked. It was just the way it was. And so whenever there were special gatherings or vacations, the family knew that they had to make accommodations for Kenny. Nobody wanted to deal with Beatrice. And so when he died, it was hard. Beatrice felt like she couldn't go on. Literally, she couldn't breathe. The sheets on his bed, his comforter, the stains of the vomit where he got sick all remained. She didn't want to wash his seat, sheets because she didn't want to lose his body scent. His room became a shrine, perhaps for others looking in a strange thing. But on tough days for Beatrice, that room was a bomb, and she would find her way there. She would lose herself in his possessions, burying her head into his hoodie. She is holding on clenched down to love. She's holding on to the memories of Kennedy. Love is really worth holding on to, good love, because not all love is good love, and therefore somebody might say, is it love at all? As a disclaimer, I have to say today, because I haven't said it in the other part of the series, that not all love is good love. If someone is abusing you physically, emotionally, or mentally, that is not, that is not, I repeat, love. And so you should seek both safety and refuge. It is never okay to remain in relationships with people who do not treat you as queens or kings. Not okay. But good love is worth holding on to. Good love is worth hanging in there for. If you're joining us today, we've been talking about the languages of love and how different people have different love languages. In the previous weeks, we mentioned the language of love that involves affirming words. These folks light up when you speak kind, warm, supportive, and encouraging kind of words. You can see them visibly change when you give them a compliment. They crave affirmation, and the more you can give, the more they can take. Jesus was good in this area. He could also stop people in their tracks. He could also go upside somebody's head. But Jesus was also good at freeing, liberating, and encouraging marginalized people to live their best life. And he affirmed their good choices. He's going to show up one more time today in the text because, well, that's getting ahead of ourselves. Then there's the second language of love, acts of service. We learned last week we have a few of those kind of folks in our congregation that are similar to our protagonist from last week in the text, Martha. We lean on these folks without always realizing it because they make sure the hard work gets done. They like to get things done. They do not like waiting around and a whole lot of talk that leads to nothing. Like the Kansas City Chiefs, they know how to make a touchdown, getting the ball from A to Z down the field. Sorry, Philadelphia Eagles, you bought your A game too. These are our action-oriented people. You want to help them roll up your sleeves and get to work. They are more impacted by what you do, not what you say. And last, we learned about the language of quality time. Martha got upset with Mary because she was doing nothing. These folks are less impacted by what you do, and they're more impacted by your being with them. They like coffee hour. They like having your undivided attention. They like to gather as long as you are with them. They like long drives and family time and date night and game night and binge on the couch night, gathering in a nutshell. 
Today we dangle in the court of love languages of gifts and physical touch. Here in the biblical text today, we find both. Jesus is invited to yet another home. This seems like a thing that kind of happens. A woman crying, the tears from her eyes wet Jesus' feet, and she uses her hair to wipe away the tears, then kisses his feet, and then adorns them with perfume. She gives the gift of expensive perfume, and she does something we almost never see in the Bible. She is definitely touching Jesus. Rumor was the perfume was a year worth of wages. I call that expensive. She not only touches Jesus' feet, she kisses his feet and then waxes on some per perfume. Okay, how many of you think she's gone just a tad bit too far? It's one thing to touch people's hearts, but she's touching Jesus' feet. Security. Simon the Pharisee is like, if you were all that, you'd know about this woman all up on your feet. You'd know what she does. In case you didn't know that Simon is throwing shade, that's a dig. And we know that Jesus doesn't let digs go. He comes for Simon in Jesus' fashion. Simon, if there are two people who have a debt and one owes 10,000 and one owes 100, and they're both forgiven their debt, who would be more grateful? Who do you guys think would be more grateful? Simon is like, ah, the one with the greater debt. Bingo! Jesus implies this woman has a big debt, and so her gratitude is bigger. Her love is greater. The great lover understood the woman's love language of gift and physical touch. That's why he was able to say to Simon, do you see this woman? Do, do, do you see this woman? Do you see one another? Grandmaster Saifu Brahma died this past week. He used to sit on our walks a lot. You would see him around High Park. He was adorned in a white robe with a white turban. He died. But did you see him? Did you see him on our steps? Did you know who he was? Did you know he taught karate to kids? Did you know anything about him? Jesus speaks to Simon, did you see that the one that owned the greatest debt would have the greatest love? But it seems like you see everything. You understand that the one with the biggest debt would have the greatest love, but you can't see that this woman has great love because of what has been forgiven. Do you see her? Before we can begin to speak any love language, we have to see those around us really see them. Jesus could see this woman was full of love. Author of the five languages of love, Gary Chapman, said that in every culture, there are ways of expressing love through gifts. This woman was so appreciative of Jesus that no gift was too great for him. Jeremy was raised by a single parent. Yeah, when he was young, one parent left and one stayed. It was not easy. They lived in a one-bedroom apartment. His mom gave him the room and she took the couch. But his mom never complained. He saw her go without. He saw her work hard. And he saw just how much his mom loved him. And he knew, even as a boy, he wanted to do something special for his mom. And so as an adult doing fine in life with his own family, he purchased his mom a home. Whoa, that's a gift, isn't it? That's like jumping over a whole lot of gifts you could get. He fully furnishes the house, and he picks her up to show it to her, except she thinks it's his house. They're walking down the street, and she's like, where is this house? They get up to the house. She's like, oh, my God, it's not just a house. It's a brand new house. He tells her he wants her to see the inside of the house. She's so excited, walking around, touching the walls, touching the furniture, sitting in the chair. She's so happy for her son. She's so happy that he's done well in his life, that her dream and her prayers have been answered. And he walks her over to the refrigerator, and there's a note on the door, and it says, open, mom. Inside the refrigerator is a dangling key. I do not know what mom's love language was, but on that day, there was a lot of physical touch and the gift of a home. Because of the uniqueness of her love, 
Like the woman, it made the son's love greater. And you could feel the love, really feel the love between them two. Because of where some folks come from, because of the long road from nothing to something, something, the love is deep. The love is greater. When you've been on skid row, when you've missed meals, when you've gone without, when you've come up on the rough side of the mountain, when God has brought you a mighty, mighty long ways, sometimes the love is so much, so much greater. Now Jesus, with his words of affirmation, comes down the stretch to home base. Hear him clearly. I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, Simon, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, Simon, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with this expensive perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown me great love. Not just love, but she has shown me great love. She didn't just speak the language of physical touch and gifts, but her love stands alone was great. Okay. In the space of criticism for her foolish actions, Jesus affirms that this woman's heart and actions were in the right place. With the language of physical touch and gifts, she has shown me great love, great love. Thank you, sister. Thanks for the contribution. Love you. Research in child development has shown that babies need touch. They need to be held, they need to be kissed. And that the more they're held, the more they're kissed, the more they develop a healthier life. Out of that research came the rocking moms. You've heard about them across America for sick kids and abandoned babies and babies whose parents needed to go work were these seniors who would volunteer their time to sit in rocking chairs and hold babies. There's Science research that shows it makes the difference. I imagine if it's good for babies, physical touch is good for adults. Amen? New research is showing that seniors live longer the more they're connected to other people. So not only babies need love, seniors need love too. They need to be touched. They need for their skin to be touched. They need to be affirmed. They need to be given quality time. They need acts of service. They need gift. They need to know that their life matters. They need love. And guess what else? All of those in between need it too. That means me and you and whomever. That's why we cling to songs like, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. We know love that is powerful, and it calls us to a higher place in God, to move and operate from love that is powerful. I imagine this revival, I don't know if you guys have been checking it out in Asbury College, in Kentucky has been going on for 10, 10 days, 24-7. Kids, adults, seniors falling into this church on campus. It's gotten so crowded now, it takes four hours. People driving from all over the world. There's a big void in the world. We are just way too far from each other. We need to touch one another and hold one another. We need to speak kind words to one another. We need to spend quality time with one another. We need someone to come alongside us and help us. We can't do this thing by ourselves. We need gifts. We need good love. We all need to be loved well. You can never get too much love. You can never overdose on love. You know, like with some vitamins, if you take too much, it's not good for your body. But love? Love. You take too many drugs, you can overdose. But love? 
You can never get too much love. Love is worth sticking in there for it. It's worth showing up for. Michelle Obama says, you know, for 10 years, I wasn't feeling my marriage. But then the 20, if I had given up in the 10, I would have never discovered the 20. Love is worth coming back again and again. It's worth the miles. The more languages we speak, the better. Bending down love, crying love, washing one another's feet love, buying expensive perfume. There is nothing that's too expensive for you, my love kind of love. I've come to pour my praise on you kind of love, like all from Mary's perfume box. You weren't there the night that Jesus touched me kind of love, when Jesus wrapped his arms all around me kind of love. You did not feel what I felt on that evening. You can't begin to understand this kind of love. Good, good, good love is worthy of holding on with everything you've got. Great love. Great love. Hold on, God's people. Hold on. Hold on to love. Amen.